up guys, Jimmy Tang here with Andrew and today we are going to be unboxing, assembling and testing the new flagship scooter for Varla, the Varla Eagle One Pro. Special thanks to Varla for sending this out to us. A lot of you guys have been asking about the Eagle One Pro and now we have the opportunity to share it with you guys. Yeah, this is Varla's first 11 inch tire scooter and first 60 volt scooter. So we're excited to see what it's all about. So it looks like we get a charger and extra brake pads. That's always nice. This charger is a two amp charger, the max output of 67.2 volts. And let's see what else is here. Oh, it's a color display. And it is an NFC card reader as well. So you should be able to use these keys to open it up and you should be able to program an Android phone to open up your scooter. With Apple, they don't allow you to program NFC cards in them. So this is 90 pounds. I'm gonna lift my knees, scoot around. But right away, I can already see that it has very similar colors as the Barla Pegasus. It's got that teal color with the silver and black. Lift this thing up. Feels good and strong. So I do like this, there's an extra pin. Okay, now that we have it all set up, Let's do a walkthrough from top to bottom to show you guys at home what this scooter's all about. The handlebar, well, wow, that's really stiff steering. Right here on the left side, we just have a nice little bell here. We do have mechanical disc brakes on here. I wish they were hydraulic disc brakes. It does look like this is designed for e-bikes because it says the pedal assist levels, but this was the same on the Varla Pegasus. PAS levels, which is pedal assist levels, but this is just the speed settings. So one, two, and three. This is pretty neat. It shows what the watt output is. So it will show you how much energy is being generated to the motors. There's an NFC card reader. So when you go to shut it off and on, you'll need an NFC card reader to turn it on. So you see the little NFC card symbol, put that over there and it's good to go. Moving on over here, we have the thumb throttle. It is similar to the other thumb throttles we've seen on the Nami Bernie Max and also the Wolf King GT Pro. These handlebar grips are pretty nice. They're really soft and they lock into place. So I do like that, that they shouldn't spin as much on you. We were missing one of the bolts in the box. So just make sure you check your box. Coming down here, we have the stem of the scooter, which also has cable running through it. The folding mechanism, which is very similar to the Nanorobot that we've seen in the past. Almost like opening up a water faucet. Just open it up like this to drop down real secondary. easy. Secondary. Oh, secondary pin. Forgot about that. I do like that because these bolts fell. We've seen people complain about a Nan robot scooter where the bolt fells and then the stem snaps on them. I love that they have a secondary folding pin on here because you just never know when bolts are gonna break or get sheared. And the fact that you have a backup, it really instills confidence in you. Yeah, unfortunately there is no way to lock it when folded. And as you can see, the TFT display runs into the kick plate. But I do like that they made this rubber right here to protect the display. Not being able to lock when folded, it's not a huge deal breaker just because a lot of the high performance electric scooters don't allow you to do that. And getting it upright, it's pretty easy. You just wanna spin this till it's closer, rotate that so it fits into place, and then just keep tightening down until it's nice and snug. This light on the scooter actually works pretty well. I'm surprised I can see it in the daylight. I'll be interested to see how this performs at nighttime. But one thing I already like is it doesn't move around a lot. Where most scooters, when it's like this, you'll see it flop up and down. 11 by four inch tire, the thousand watt motor, the peak output of each motor is gonna be 1300 watts. Then we have the coil suspension in the front with swing arm suspension. Down here we have 160 millimeter brake disc with JAK super brake mechanical disc brakes. I've never seen those brakes before. The deck itself, so this is a silicone grip. Being brown, that may help. A lot of times the black silicone grips show the dirt on it really easily. The deck itself looks fine. The body, it looks plasticky, but I think that's metal. Yeah, it says it's um, aluminum and aluminum. steel. And then this is plastic up here. This is the first kickstand I've seen without a larger foot base. This kick plate looks a little small. And then this fi Fender tire hugger actually looks nice. I, I like that. And it feels pretty solid. I'm not even pushing hard on it and it just moves forward. It's not very much, it's like half a centimeter, but if you feel like you have some stem play, I found by flipping this around, it fixed the issue. So as soon as I flip this around, it flipped from here to this side, it worked out good. And they also marked it on top. So they've done some marking with whiteout pens. They did it with the cable wraps. 
So they must be indicating that this is supposed to be the top, which is weird because it looks identical one way or the other. As soon as I flip this around, it fixed the issue and you'll see now there's not that stem movement I was looking at. We're gonna get our safety gear on and we're gonna go take this for a test spin. Okay guys, we got our safety gear on. We're here in this great park, ripping it around on the road and on trails. We're gonna talk about some of our first impressions on this new scooter by Barlow. One thing about this scooter is when you first press on the throttle, it takes a while for it to pick up, but as soon as it goes, it just starts to take off. I reached out to Varley to send me the P settings. They haven't sent them to me yet. So that's gotta be something in the settings because that's a very gradual takeoff for a high performance scooter like that. And the steering is really tight on the scooter. It's not like your normal high powered scooter where you can easily steer. It's one of those things where it's leaning when you turn. It just feels like it wants to throw me off if I turn left or right. So I have to lean into my turn like this. It could be due to the nylon tires, but it just doesn't hold its edge well. I've ridden Dultrons with the nylon tires. They're perfectly fine when I make that carving motion. This just feels like it wants to throw me off. So I have to be really conscious of where my body weight is on the scooter. You can definitely feel right off the bat, this is the stiffest steering column. It's, there's a lot of resistance. So maybe that's a good thing for when you're going high speeds. And then we've got this thumb throttle. Look at that, you're not getting anything. So there's a huge dead zone. That's like a quarter of a turn. Let's give this a try. Let's talk about that. Let's do that. There's no way to get it out. You there can it get it, but yeah, it's, it's pretty painful. I can't tell if the, the turning, that little kind of wonkiness of the turning is because of the more narrow handlebars or the really stiff steering. But if you look, drop a line straight down. I mean, it looks like it's gonna end up behind the axle. So it, you're, you're going down straight down that steering column. Yeah, right? and then you end up right here, which this isn't really how it's supposed to be designed. It should be either right there or in front of it. Mm -hmm. So this is what we call a negative trail. This creates some instability when steering because you really want the steering column to be running either with the axle bolt or in front of it. Turning, it just feels awkward because of that negative trail and rake. And again, this is just our initial unboxing setup and test ride. And so we'll play around with it, but we'll eventually do a full review once we get some more miles under our belt. So with the Varla Eagle One Pro, it's a completely brand new scooter. Varla has told me our input will help evolve the future production models of the scooter. But again, even though this is called the Varla Eagle One Pro, they did not build upon the Varla Eagle One, the, the previous model. This is a brand new scooter. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, we've been riding around this Varla Eagle One Pro. It's, it's needing a little more refinement and a little more adjusting than a lot of the other scooters that we've unboxed. But this is just our initial impressions and we are going to do a full review video after this. But Andrew, what are some of your initial impressions after riding this? It's so-so for me, but once I adjust things, I'm hoping that it'll get much better for me. From the kickstand, the real stiff steering, the more narrow handlebars, the power, the thumb throttle with its dead space. But we're gonna work through those kinks and we'll get our full review to you guys. So make sure you stay tuned, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. Thanks for watching you guys. And when you guys ride, wear your safety gear. <laughs> Durability test.